Now let us see some details about a loaded spring. When a spring is loaded, what happens? What happens is when you load a spring, you are applying a force on it. Due to this application, the spring will be extended. That means there will be an extension. If the force is very small, the extension will be very small. And when the force is big, the extension will be big. So depending upon the force that you apply on a spring, you can have different values of extensions. And this force is proportional to the extension. Let us take a simple case where you are attaching a body of mass m to a spring and let the body rest on a smooth frictionless table. Now when you pull the body in one direction, what happens? There will be an extension in the spring because the spring is disturbed. When this happens, what is happening inside the spring? The spring will react in such a way that the body is pulled back. That means there will be a restoring force developed within the spring. And this restoring force is actually acting in a direction which is opposite to the extension that is produced. Now we can write F proportional to minus X. This proportionality will be converted into a constant. Now we get a small equation F equal to minus KX. This K is what is known as a spring constant. What is the relevance of this spring constant? When you have a light spring, the value of K will be very small. Whereas, if it is a very heavy spring, the value of the K will be very big. So, by looking at the values of K, you will be able to say whether it is a light spring or a heavy spring. Now, we have an equation F equal to minus KX. I told you K is what is known as the spring constant. And how do you define the spring constant? From this equation itself, you can define it. You can see that K is equal to F by X, where F is the restoring force and X is the extension. So the restoring force per unit extension is what is known as the spring constant. Now we have an equation for the spring system, F equal to minus KX. But we know F is equal to MA and A is the acceleration which can be represented as D square X by DT square. So at the place of F, we will substitute m into d square x by dt square. That is, we have a new equation, m into d square x by dt square equal to minus kx. But already we have an equation representing the value of d square x by dt square. d square x by dt square equal to minus omega square x. Now we have to make a substitution, m into d square x by dt square is equal to minus kx. By substituting the value for d square x by dt square, we get an equation m into minus omega square x equal to minus kx. Now, this equation is reduced to a very simple form, omega square equal to k by m, where k is the spring constant and m the mass of the body. Now, what we are going to do is, we are going to make an equation for the period of this motion. We have already an equation for the period, it is a very fundamental equation, t is equal to 2 pi by omega. We have omega square is equal to k by m, therefore omega is equal to root of k by m. Therefore, the equation for period will become t equal to 2 pi by omega equal to 2 pi divided by square root of k by m, that is equal to 2 pi into square root of m by k.